All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening, and uh, welcome to the uh, call for tonight. And uh, we are going to just do a little impromptu training with uh, a Genius Trader Pro. And I'm um, going to get into a few things here. And what I want to do tonight is to uh, give you some ideas on um, some things you can do to kind of speed up uh, getting set up in your course. And uh, I, I don't want to hold you long. That's not the idea in these uh, in these courses in these uh, in these trainings. It really is to just kind of get in, um, show you a little a little thing that might uh, might be able to help you to move uh, faster. Uh, and then I will uh, get out of your hair for the weekend. So uh, tonight uh, uh, I've called this uh, GTP hacks, and uh, maybe we'll do. Uh, more one of these and then uh, uh, and then and then we'll do and then at the end we'll do a just a, a, a start to finish setup and uh, so that's not going to be tonight that that that'll be another night we just kind of want to give you some idea on some things you can do to move faster so what, what I want to cover tonight is just kind of general organization of how you can move quickly to get your courses set up and w one thing I'm going to cover is is not really even going to be a part of G GTP uh, per se, and that is I'm going to suggest that if you don't have uh, you know a password manager, uh, mainly because uh, some of what you're going to be doing is you're going to be setting up students, you are going to be setting up uh, yourself in different in different venues, you're going to be setting up things in Genius. Uh, marketing pro you're gonna be setting up things in webinar fusion pro and if you don't have one already and I, I i can tell you that up until a year and a half ago i did not have this because i didn't think i needed it uh but now things with with all of the browser-based software that uh i have if you don't have anything like roboform or or one pass i'm going to suggest that you get it i think it's 12 dollars per year and you really do, it really is going to make life easier for you. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. So, uh, and, and so again, that, that's just kind of one thing right off the top, regardless of what you're doing. If, if you're going to be using this software, you're going to be using Genius Marketing Pro, you're going to be setting up students, you're going to be setting up different identities and, and trying to keep them straight is, is, a, is, a, is a pain. And trying to keep them straight is very difficult. And again, I've been marketing online since 2007, and I'd heard to get it, heard to get it. You need to get it. You need to get it. And I just ignored it. And I can tell you, I, you, you can easily spend uh, close to an hour just trying to write down and manage passwords and identities if you do not um, have something like this. And more than likely, most software that's going to be coming on the market is going to be browser based. I mean, years ago, you got all the software you could download. A lot of it was WordPress plugins, but now uh, most software is going to be operating in the cloud because it's better to do that way. And so again, uh, I'm going to suggest that, uh, again, this has this has a little to do with GT GTP, but just from an organizational standpoint, I'm going to recommend that you get uh, RoboForm. If you don't like that one, there's one called OnePass. I don't have an affiliate link for you, but that's just kind of uh, this, yeah, just kind of uh, just some information. Now, I'll show you why that is here in a minute. One of the things um, uh, you could do here, I'm going to kind of just show you a product here, and I'm going to open up my um, – I'm going to open up my uh, my screen so you can see it. Yeah, Dane. Yeah, uh, just build the password into. <laughs> yeah, um, but but that wouldn't help you in all the other places where you got to do stuff. So, um, okay. So what you're looking at is a PLR product uh, that I have, and it's called Coaching Authority Gold. I think it's it's uh, and so and so what I would do. And I'm going to be kind of talking you through this uh, t tonight to some degree. And again, um, we're not going to do all of this, but I do want to kind of share with you just my perspective on how you might go about this. Now, if I had if, if I had this PLR product, and I've actually started some of the process, what you want to do uh, kind of first is is just be organized, right? And and you're looking at this product. And so what I want to do is I want to figure out well what am I going to put into the course? What do I want my 
What do I want my student to see? And the main thing is going to be the videos. And so what I want to do is I want to see how the videos are organized and how they're named. Now, one of the things you're going to notice right off the bat here is that the videos are named video one, video two, video three, video four, video five, so on and so forth. Now, you, when you upload these videos to Genius Trainer Pro, you need to reorganize them and rename them. Now, you don't have to rename the files. Right, but you do want to make sure that you rename them when you go into GTP. So again, don't spend time um, re renaming your files. Uh, that that uh, you you want to you want to spend that time kind of writing into GTP. So I'm going to show you uh, what I mean by that here, and I'm going to go into Genius Trainer Pro, and what I'm going to do here, and one of the things I I do want to kind of show you why um, I I think this. If I were just going to log out here, right, all I'm going to do with RoboForm here is I'm going to go to my uh, one of my uh, identities and I'm just going to click fill and submit. Right. And so then I don't have to memorize all the passwords. I do have a master password that I can use. And that's why I'm going to suggest to you. And again, the more browser based software that you have, that you get something like uh, RoboForm. It's like twelve dollars, twelve dollars a year, I think. Now is you are going to upload documents and you're going to upload content to Genius Trainer Pro. And that's even before you start organizing your course. So your workflow is always going to be to upload your content first, right? That's going to be your workflow. So you start by uploading your content. And if you are going to be uploading content according to uh, and, 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 and doing it in a way that's going to be most efficient, you want to or uh, your MP4 uh, first, right? Yeah, last pass is fine. Last pass is fine, Andrew. One pass. Now, what I will say about last pass and one pass, I don't know if they interact with your browser as well as RoboForm does, right? I think one pass probably has stuff in there for your credit cards. Um, I don't put my credit card information in there, but um, last pass, I think, has stuff in there for your credit cards. Uh, the Form interacts best for an internet marketer because of the ease at which you can log into things uh, for your for your marketing business. That's what I'll say. Okay, so let's say that what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by getting content into Genius Trainer Pro, and I'm going to start with the the most probably the, the the biggest files first. Right. And that's how I tend to do it. Now, one of the ways that you can do this in Genius Trainer Pro is that you can import, you can actually upload your content to YouTube and then you can import from YouTube. Right. So one of my one of my uh, one of my uh, uh, one of the ways in which you can do that is you can take this you can take your YouTube channel and I would suggest that you don't use your main YouTube channel. Like, for example, I have a YouTube channel that I use. It's just for just kind of stuff like this where I'm not going to be using it. I'm just going to kind of be uh, uploading things that I'm going to keep unlisted. And uh, because the longer the time goes on and uh, I, I was uh, talking to someone about that. And I, I think even I was talking to uh, my daughter about this is that it, it seems as if um, Google is really discouraging. Uh, the use of even multiple Gmail addresses these days, and um, they're, they're not necessarily making it easier to 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 use multiple um, identities inside of your YouTube channel. So, so I'm going to say that you you kind of want to have one that you're going to use uh, just for this purpose. I'm going to open this one up here, and one of the things I can do, and I hope I have the bandwidth to do this, I'm just going to upload, click upload. And then what I would do is, of course, I would take one of my videos and I can just upload this video to YouTube, right? I'm gonna, when I upload that video to YouTube, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it unlisted, right? Because the only way then that somebody can actually view this content on the web is that they would have the URL, right? But you're going to, it's not going to matter once you actually get it into genius trainer pro because you're going to then uh you're going to then delete this video you're going to come back and delete this video anyway so that's one way you could upload it and then you wouldn't have to upload it straight to gdp 
right? So, so, so I'm not going to do that process. I think I have a video here on, um, I may have a video already. I may have a video on this channel already. So let, let me see if I have one here. I think I do. Okay. So I, I have a sales video on this channel. And so I could take then this video. I'm going to take the link address. And then when I get ready to actually uh, upload a video, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to this YouTube. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click add new video. And then what I'm going to do is now the, the most important part to this process is going to be naming the file, right? That's going to be the single most important thing uh, that you're going to do in this process. Right, so so in this particular case, uh, I'm going to import this from uh, YouTube. I can also import it from Vimeo and Daily Motion. Right now, Jerry, your your question is, can you store files on Amazon AWS? Now, if you're going to import that video, Jerry, into Genius Trainer Pro, the answer to that would be no. You would want then to uh, you would want to upload the video to YouTube and then import it over into GTP. But if you wanted to keep it in Amazon AWS for safekeeping, that would be perfectly appropriate as well as as a matter of fact, that would be recommended. Right? I would recommend that if you're going to keep a video for safekeeping, just in case you know anything ever happened, you know, God forbid, I don't think anything will. I would keep a copy of all of your video content that you really want to guard. And you really, you really think highly of. I would keep it in a place like Amazon AWS, where I keep a copy of a lot of my videos on Amazon S3. A lot of the old uh, interviews that I've done that I really value, I keep them on Amazon S3, even though I have them other places on the web. So the answer to your question is: If you're going to be uh, uploading to GTP, no, you can't, you you can't import it from there. But I would suggest that you store it there. Okay, so now uh, for in terms of the uh, video URL, all I would do is I would put that YouTube video URL, and you're gonna put the entire YouTube video URL. You're gonna put the entire thing in there, right? And then and then what you're gonna do though is you're gonna name this file, and I'm gonna I want to kind of come back to this um, and and kind of talk to you about how to name this file. And I want to do that. I'm not going to actually go through the process. I'm going to go to back, back to manage videos and, and, and kind of talk about this for a second. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that you should notice right away that I've done, how many of you all see the way I named the videos for coaching authority? Right. If, if you can if you can see what I've done, I want you to put the number uh, one in the question box. If you can tell if you can kind of tell what I've done here. I And even this, I didn't do a great job of it. I could do a better job of it. And I'm going to kind of tell you um, how I could do a better job of it here in a minute. But but does everybody see what I kind of did there? Okay, good. Because because what's going to happen is you you are the the more that you add content to GDP, you are going to want to be able to locate your videos quickly, and then you're going to want to be able to put them into your courses. And the way that you uh, and the way that you, it's probably a little small. Here's what I, what I'll do is I'll try to uh, uh, size that up here. Okay, so so can you can you see the net, how I named them? And can everybody tell how I named them now? Oh, see, so so what you'll notice is that uh, first that they're they're all uh, they're all the same. Uh, I've named them Coaching Authority Video 1, Video 2, Video 3, Video 4. And even then, I didn't do a great job of that. Okay, right, right, right. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to say this, Jonathan. Um, I probably should have done that, and I'm going to tell you how um, I should have done that here in a minute. Right? Uh, but but basically, this is what I mean by organization. You want to organize them as you name your content. Right, that is very important. So as you start to put your content into GDP, you want to make sure that you are doing it and you are you are putting it in there and you are naming it uh, in a sense that you want to have it organized, number one. Number two, you want to have in mind that you're going to be putting courses in there after 
coaching authority, right? Or whatever your first course is. Does that make sense? So in other words, yes, you want to you wanna name it uh, for this course, but you also want to keep in mind you're going to have courses in there after this one. Okay, do, does, does that make sense, everybody? When I say that, do you understand what I mean when I say you're naming it not only for this course, but actually for the courses you're going to be putting in after that? If you understand what I'm saying, please put the number two in the question box. Okay, great. Thank you, Mark. And you want to do that at the point at which you are importing. And you want to do that at the point at which you are uploading. Do not want to wait until afterwards. Right, So the time for you to organize and for you to think through how you're going to have your content in there is going to be while you are importing. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to size this down for a second. Because what I want to do here is I want to go straight to my course so that you can see what I mean. And I'm going to go to the course. I'm going to list my courses. And I'm going to log into my coaching authority course. I'm going to go to add course content. And when I go to add course content, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the add a section button. Yes, you can, Dane. Of course you can. But but I'm going to I'm going to show you why that matters here in a minute. I'm not going to add a chapter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a section. Yep, no, I I totally get you, Dane. Yes, you can, but I'm going to show you why uh, what I said, uh, why you want to kind of keep this in mind. Now, when I get ready to add a lesson, what, what I'm going to be doing when I click insert vMerge is I'm going to be using a drop down menu. I'm going to size that up so you can see it. All right, let me size this up. So when I get ready to add a lesson, I'm going to say this is lesson seven. What's lesson seven called? Lesson seven is called, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, lesson seven is called developing a client relationship that works for both of you. Okay, so uh, lesson seven. I'm sorry for you having to watch me type. Uh, I can't even remember what it was. Develop a client relationship. When I do videos, I try to edit that part out. I don't like for people to have to watch me type, but it is what it is. We're on this call. And now here, here's why I say what I'm saying. Uh, I'm going to go and I'm going to select. And what's going to happen is you're going to see a drop down menu. Right now, that drop down menu is going to grow. And you're going to have to scroll through that drop down menu the more that you have content in there. And so that's why you want to make sure that it's named so that you don't want to spend a lot of time kind of hunting through the stuff, looking for things in different places. First, you want to make sure everything that you have for one course is in one place, right? It's in one section. That's first of all. That's what I mean by naming it for the course. And then second of all, you want to make sure that it's nurses after it so that you don't have to hunt through all the, all the list as you put more courses in there. Okay, does that make sense now? So if what I said makes sense right now, please put the number three in the question box, just so I'll know. So that now you can see it. Okay, if that, if, if you, thank you, Jerry, I appreciate that. Okay, great. Okay, so, 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 so as you as you organize things, you you really do have to do you, you really do want to do it this way because this will save you this will save you hours, right? When you start putting courses together, trust me. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you one other thing tonight. Like I said, you know, my goal is to get you out of here in 30 minutes. Now, one other thing that I want to show you here is um is is going to be based on um one thing here and when i click first of all okay i'm gonna if i click activate and i and i find a video let's say i go ahead and put that in there 
and then I say this lesson. Right, and then I come back. I didn't I didn't do it right, but if I edit this lesson now. Okay, what if what you're gonna see right now is that I have the add resources section. Right? Can everybody see the add resources section to my lesson? Right, if you can see the add resources section to my lesson, please put the Y put a Y in the question box. Right now, that's that's going to now be toward the bottom of your lesson that we just created. Now, the, the, the same the same concept goes when you are uploading resources to Genius Trainer Pro. Right. And this is some of this is about workflow. Right. And it's about workflow and making sure that you get things uploaded appropriately. Right. OK, Keon, can, uh, if you if you can see if you can refresh or uh, or uh, go out to YouTube, uh, we should. It, the resolution should be fine. I've, I've raised the resolution so you can see the actual um, the actual page now. OK, so now uh, what I want to do is I want to kind of show you one thing about this. Um, when I put in resources, right, I want to show you uh, one aspect of this, and I'm going to go back to a particular lesson. I think I'm going to go back to lesson one. I want to go back to lesson one. I want to edit that lesson, and I want to show you something that I have here. And when I go back to lesson one, you're going to notice I've got two resources here. Right? How many of you all see the two resources that I have in lesson one? Okay, if you see the two resources that I have in lesson one, please put a Y in the question box. And you can see now that I didn't do a good job of naming if this is where I'm going to put the resources. Right? And I'm going to. Right? So, so everybody can see this. Now, once again, understand. I did not do a great job of naming this, and I'm going to show you why I did not do a great job. I didn't do a great job of naming this for the sake of the student, right, for the sake of the student. And you need to name this for the sake of the student in the resources area, and I'm going to show you why that is right now. Right now, this, this, is, this, is, my, this is the instructor side, right? This is the instructor side. I want to show you the student side now. Right now, let, let's go to the student side of this. And I'm logged in as a student here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna size this up here. Okay, now, if you look and you see what the student sees for the, for the downloadable resources, right? Does everybody see what the student sees? This says Coaching Authority Audio One. This says Coaching Authority Social Media Marketing uh, Images. Now, because this is going to appear in the downloadable resources section, what would have been a better way for me to name those documents? What would have been a better way for me to name them? Anybody can tell me. So how would you, so, so, so what, would, what would you name those documents if you were me? Right, what would be a better way of naming them? Downloadable resources, and I were gonna be your student, then what's a better way to name those documents? Okay, let's think specifically about the audio 
and they're going to be downloading them and specifically about the images. What's a better, okay, right, okay, so yes, Elaine, right. So, okay, simple numbering, first of all, uh, Elaine, and I would say downloadable resources, but what I would say is, what right, I would say here, click here to download audio one or click to download audio one. Right, right, Dane. It should be descriptive. Audio one, because we already know, okay, I would, we already know that this is lesson one. Okay, I would say that if I know that they have to download it, I would name it so that they tell, right, Julie, call to action. So I would name that content, call to action, and tell them, click here to download audio one. Call to action, exactly. So, so what you want to keep in mind is that when you put your resources into the course, you want to make sure that you describe the resources in a call to action manner. Right? Does everybody make it? Does, do you, do you under, does everybody understand what I say that when I say a call to action manner? I don't want to use too much marketing jargon, but 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 that but what Julie says is exactly right, Julie and Jerry. You, you want to you want to make sure that you are you are dis, you 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 have the content named that tells them what to do right now i know that's a little counterintuitive but that will make a happier student because you will have students who will come here and they will say oh i didn't know i was supposed to download that it just said audio one i, I clicked it and then it didn't do anything and so what will happen is you'll have students that will email you about this when this is something that if you name it correctly, then they'll know to download it. That's right. That's right. No, Elaine, it's in one place. It's in one place, Elaine. It's actually going to be here. Right? This is the instructor side. Now, notice I did not do a good job of naming that. Right, so when you name your, your resource, you're going to do a better job than I am, right? You're going to do a better job than I am because you're going to, when you add a resource, right, when you add a resource, okay, when you write into this box, you're going to do a better job of naming. You're going to say download audio or, or click to download audio one. And then you're going to put the resource in there. Right? Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, is that, is, that, is that making sense to you? So if that's making sense to you, please put the number four in the question box. So Elaine, this is the only spot that you can do this in terms of downloading resources. Now, it's not the only place where I can download, I can put an audio. If that's, sense, if that's what you mean, Elaine, correct. Elaine, you were correct if you're, if you're saying, is that the only place I can put an audio? There are other places. But, but if I want to make it downloadable, that's the only place where I can put it in the resources section. Well, you, you can upload. Um, no, they do not all have to be imported from YouTube. You can upload direct to. Um, you can upload direct to. Uh, I like to do it in YouTube in a in a place where those videos are going to be, right? And because I like to have those video. Because again, I'm a belt and suspenders guy. So I like to have it so that I have those videos unlisted on YouTube in case I have to do anything else with them. And then I might store the original copy someplace safe. So they can be uploaded directly to GTP, Jerry. Or uh, I like to do it by importing because I'm, I'm, I'm belt and suspenders when it comes to my videos. That's right, Elaine. Yes, I can. I can delete 
these two resources. I can delete this one that I didn't name right. And it tells me resource deleted. Right, and then it's gone. Okay, everybody, we are at, we are exactly at 30 minutes. And that is about where I want to keep you. I don't want to keep you any longer. So, uh, so uh, I, I, if, if, uh, if, if there is, um, if there is time tomorrow, um, I will cover one more thing, but I'll cover at least one more thing this weekend. And then I'll cover something on Monday uh, because I get back to the uh, product creation challenge on Tuesday. So, so I'll cover one more thing this weekend, and uh, it'll be either tomorrow or uh, or Sunday. Yeah, we are we are talking about that, Jerry. About about uh, about domain names. We are we are talking about that. Well, Elaine. Okay, so if Elaine, if you if you wanted to. If they're unpublished, if they're unlisted on YouTube, um, nobody will be able to see it, right? So, so the only way they would be visible on YouTube, Elaine, is if you made them public. So, if they're if they're if they're unlisted, then they will not rank. As a matter of fact, no, nobody will ever see it unless you show it. Yep, right on, guys. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you uh, very much for uh, being here, and uh, I will let you get back to your uh, to your recreation and your families. And uh, so, uh, with that, uh, you can look to look to hear from me uh, about one more session uh, this weekend. If you're watching this by archive, then uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you. So, thank you very much, everybody. Have a great night and a pleasant tomorrow. Take care. Uh, yes, I will definitely c cover that, Carolyn. I'm definitely going to cover that. Yep, that I'm going to cover that more. So oh my goodness, Andrew, um, <laughs> uh, go to bed. <laughs> uh, okay, all right, everybody, have a good night and a pleasant tomorrow. Take care.